and in his human companion Nora the Wizard had been travelling together for some time, whilst Oggy, a human paladin, was journeying alone. They soon met a cheery half orc bard known as Tan, who was working on a ship. As the group began to make conversation, they heard a sound from below deck, and after some investigation, discovered a teeming druid stowaway called Val. Suddenly, they were alerted to a commotion above, as a number of passengers and crew began to climb over the sides of the ship straight into the ocean, compelled to jump to their deaths by a hypnotic sea creature called a Rusalka. The newly formed group banded together and defeated the creature. Upon reaching the city of Valashi, they began to explore. They met Nimi, an upbeat seamstress in Tony, a Rakshasa sorcerer who owned an illicit store selling magical items. Illicit because only members of the local magic users guild had permission to perform magic. Later that evening, the group attended a lively festival where Nora encountered a half elf sorcerer named Narl. The evening took a dark turn where the group had stumbled across a rotting corpse and were promptly arrested by the authorities. Unable to provide any information, the group was confined to a cell where they met a grumpy prisoner called Axel. Suddenly, the dungeon walls exploded inwards and everyone was broken out by the thistle winds, Axel's band of criminal friends. Now on the run, the two groups joined forces on a particular mission to steal a special vase from the mad wizard Giltry. Upon breaking into Giltry's home, they found a large beast called a Quaggan guarding the vase. The suckish creature called itself Fu and taught only in riddles. In frustration, Ren threatened Fu with an arrow, successfully prompting the Quaggan to move out of the way, but he immediately felt guilty, threatening such an innocent creature. Taking pity on Fu, the group decided to help it escape the wizard's irresponsible custody. When the mad wizard returned home, the gang defeated him together, and Fu took his revenge by eating him whole. Val the Tiefling had a strange turn that caused her to be unusually aggressive towards the group and made her eyes glow blood red, but it passed as quickly as it came. Our group then followed the thistle winds to deliver the vase to a mysterious benefactor. They were led to a spooky underground lair where they met a terrifying black widow until she was revealed to be Nali, the sorceress in disguise, and that the thistle winds were actually members of the Magic Users Guild. And Axel was Nali's twin brother in disguise as well. The events had taken place since the prison break had been a test to see if the group were eligible to join the guild, and surprisingly, they had passed. Our group were then told they could either face arrest or be sentenced to prison or join the Magic Guild, so they chose the latter. They all then made their journey to the guild headquarters, where they were given lodgings and met other eccentric members of the organisation. The momentary peace did not last long, however. The gang awoke on their first morning at the guild to find Ren had left them, leaving behind only a letter addressed to Nora. He told her that she was free of any servitude she felt towards him and that she should continue on with their newfound friends. Ren was soon found unconscious in the garden, having succumbed to a dangerous disease known as a blackened dream could only be cured with an ether flower from the Feywild. So Nora, accompanied by Oggy, Tam and Val, journeyed to the Feywild via a special portal to bring back the cure. They met an ally named Carly in the Feywild who guided them to the Forest of Contrast, where they battled against four giant wood lice before finally finding what they sought. They returned to the guild only just in time to save Ren who had been experiencing vivid fever dreams in a hell of his own. When he finally awoke, Ren and Nora spoke for a long time when he learned more about their history, and thanks to some very unsubtle leaves dropping from Oggy and Tam, the rest of the group did too. It was revealed that Ren was the youngest son of the Angalion family, the cruel nobles who had previously ruled over the northern city of Highgash until they were violently overthrown seven years before. Nora had been working as a family librarian at the time and helped Ren escape the night that the Angalion house fell. The pair have been on the run ever since and have fled south as far from their homeland as possible. They were anxious to keep their identities hidden, and their fellow party members promised to keep their secret. The gang still needed to figure out who had cast Ren with the disease that nearly killed him. He informed the group that before being struck down in the garden, he remembered an old woman approaching him who was not part of the guild. He also recalled from his fever dream an elven woman with black skin and white hair who had said, Find me, where the land and the sea meet the north and the snow. After some intense research, they discovered that the woman might have been Lady Silverhair, a 
drow goddess of moonlight beauty singing and dancing. Her chaotic evil brother, also known as the Lord of Shadow, was a drow deity of shadow magic and thievery. Both deities were involved in a battle among the gods. However, an important page was torn from the book, halting their research any further. The group discussed the possibility of following the strange words of the drow goddess and travelling north, but they knew how dangerous it would be for Nora and Ren. As Ren grew more and more restless, confined within the guild headquarters, the group made the decision to take on a new mission. Their task was to infiltrate and disband an animal smuggling ring that had been active for about a year, selling magical animals on the black market. The group they sought was a two-day ride away, so the gang travelled into Valashi once more to purchase horses, and through a comically bad insight, they ended up buying two giraffes instead. The group then began the pursuit of these smugglers. Ren scouted ahead to find the smugglers' camp, which included cages and cages of magical beasts in their sleeping form of the smugglers. Ren managed to unlock the cage of a great black stag named Morose. However, the now awake smugglers ambushed the group in a brutal fight ensued that nearly resulted in the deaths of both Tam and Ogi. However, Valius had jured magic to change forms into a wolf and ruthlessly attack the enemies, assisted by the black stag. Yet Val did not seem in control of her jured form and also ended up attacking Tam, her blood-red eyes returning again. The gang eventually killed all of the smugglers except for a scout who they took prisoner and one other smuggler who escaped along with the group's two giraffes. Ren and Nora returned to the smugglers' camp to free the rest of the magical creatures, but one of these creatures, a harpy, flew back to where the others rested and slit the scout's throat. Determined to get the giraffes back, the group rested and then pursued the remaining smuggler. They came across an arcane doorway and after some debate about how to continue, leading to some inner party tension, they entered to find a vast underground cavernous city called the Underbrush. Just as they began to explore the city, they met a chirpy halfling barbarian named Nedda, who was on a quest to retrieve her lost memories. With some difficulty, they were able to locate a large crystal in the centre of the city that had magical properties which gave Nedda her memories back. Once the group had left the cavern, Ren stealthed back touch the crystal himself, reliving painful memories that left him visibly shaken. The group then found lodgings and explored the city some more, and around this time they also set in on a name for their company, the Tavern Alliance. While walking through the streets of the underbrush, Nora attracted a great deal of attention. Apparently she looked a great deal like the king's missing daughter Kayleen, who had been gone without a word for two years now. Brushing the stairs aside, Tavern decided to attend a festival that was happening in the city. Tam and Oggy entered a race and tied in first place, while the others explored various activities and games. In an effort to discover more information, Ren showed the crest belonging to the dead scout to a citizen. The citizen then took the crest and left in a hurry. Soon afterwards, the king of the underbrush, Alistair, gave a speech to all in attendance. He had just been given tangible proof by way of a guild crest, one Ren had passed on, that his beloved daughter Kayleen had returned. Realising the great danger they were in, the group went back to their lodgings to decide what to do next, and after lots of debate and some singing in the rain from Nora, they set out on finding the smuggler's headquarters. After some investigation, they found two carts and rail leading to a deep cavern, and after fighting some goblinoid creatures and a fire monster in a dangerous cart journey, they made it to the entrance of the smuggler's guild. Upon walking into the group headquarters, the group saw rows and rows and rows of animals in cages, and after some eavesdropping, they made themselves known to a group of guilds people. A woman named Sarah embraced Nora, calling her Kayleen and saying how pleased she was to have her best friend back. With some quick thinking, Nora went along with it, pretending to be Kayleen, who had amnesia. This group also included an orc named Gilm, who recognised Tam. They said that he used to adventure with her father. Sarah persuaded the group to follow her to Kayleen's old room, which she hoped would jog her friend's memory. She left to find Kayleen's parents, and the gang knew they needed to figure out a plan and fast. While investigating the room and trying to find out what to do next, a goblin bard named Gilf entered the picture. He immediately saw through Nora's charade and offered to help the group. Tavern agreed to trust their mysterious new ally, some more reluctantly than others, and they retired to his quarters. 
As a court son with friends in high places, Gilf offer the group intelligence and support, claiming that their interests aligned. Which brings us up to now. The group are at a crossroads. Will they stay and continue to covertly investigate? Will they capitalize on Nora's resemblance to Kayleen and try to infiltrate the court? Or will they attempt to escape the underbrush altogether? Stay with us on D20 Era to find out. The story of our group begins at sea. An elven ranger called Ren and his human companion Nora the Wizard have been travelling together for some time, whilst Oggy, a human paladin, was journeying alone. They soon met a cheery half-orc bard known as Tan who was working on the ship. As the group began to make conversation, they heard a sound from below deck, and after some investigation, discovered a teepling druid stowaway called Val. Suddenly, they were alerted to a commotion above as a number of passengers and crew began to climb over the sides of the ship straight into the ocean. Patched deaths by a hypnotic sea creature called the Rusalka. The newly formed group banded together and defeated the creature. Upon reaching the city of Balashi, they began to explore. They met Mimi, an upbeat seamstress in Tony, a Rakshasa sorcerer who owned an illicit store selling magical items. Illicit because only members of the local magic users guild had permission to perform magic. Later that evening, the group attended a lively festival where Nora encountered a half elf sorcerer named Nal. The evening took a dark turn where the group had stumbled across a rotting corpse and were promptly arrested by the authorities. Unable to provide any information, the group was confined to a cell where they met a grumpy prisoner called Axel. Suddenly, the dungeon walls exploded inwards and everyone was broken out by the thistle winds. Axel's band of criminal friends. Now on the run, the two groups join forces on a particular mission to steal a special vase from the mad wizard Giltry. Upon breaking into Giltry's home, they found a large beast called a quaggan guarding the vase. The sluggish creature called itself Fu and taught only in riddles. In frustration, Ren threatened Fu with an arrow successfully prompting the quarry to move out of the way but he immediately felt guilty, threatening such an innocent creature. Taking pity on Fu, the group decided to help it escape the wizard's irresponsible custody. When the mad wizard returned home, the gang defeated him together, and Fu took his revenge by eating him whole. Val the tiefling had a strange turn that caused her to be unusually aggressive towards the group, and made her eyes glow blood red, but it passed as quickly as it came. Our group then followed the Thistlewinds to deliver the vase to a mysterious benefactor. They were led to a spooky underground lair where they met the terrifying Black Widow until she was revealed to be Nali, the sorceress in disguise, and that the Thistlewinds were actually members of the Magic Users Guild, and Axel was Nali's twin brother in disguise as well. The events had taken place since the prison break had been a test to see if the group were eligible to join the guild, and surprisingly they had passed. Our group were then told they could either face arrest, be sentenced to prison, or join the Magic Guild. So they chose the latter. They all then made their journey to the Guild headquarters, where they were given lodgings, and met other eccentric members of the organisation. The momentary peace did not last long, however. The gang awoke on their first morning at the Guild to find Ren had left them, leaving behind only a letter addressed to Nora. He told her that she was free of any servitude she felt towards him and that she should continue on with their newfound friends. Ren was soon found unconscious in the garden having succumbed to a dangerous disease known as a blackened dream, which could only be cured with an ether flower from the Feywild. So Nora, accompanied by Oggy, Tam and Val, journeyed to the Feywild via a special portal to bring back the cure. They met an ally named Carly in the Feywild who guided them to the Forest of Contrast where they battled against four giant wood lice before finally finding what they sought. They returned to the guild only just in time to save Ren, who had been experiencing vivid fever dreams in a hell of his own. When he finally awoke, Ren and Nora spoke for a long time as they learned more about their history, and thanks to some very unsubtle leaves dropping from Oggy and Tam, the rest of the group did too. It was revealed that Ren is the youngest son of the Angalian family, cruel nobles who had previously ruled over the northern city of Highgash, until they were violently overthrown some years before. 
Nora had been working as a family librarian at the time and helped Ren escape the night that Liang Island House fell. The pair have been on the run ever since and have fled south, as far from their homeland as possible. They were anxious to keep their identities hidden, and their fellow party members promised to keep their secret. The gang still needed to figure out who had cursed Ren with the disease that nearly killed him. He had formed the group, but before being struck down in the garden, he remembered an old woman approaching him who was not part of the guild. He also recalled from his fever dream an elven woman with black skin and white hair who had said, Find me where the land and the sea meet the north and the snow. After some intense research, they discovered that the woman might have been Lady Silverhair, a drow goddess of moonlight beauty singing and dancing. Her chaotic evil brother, also known as the Lord of Shadow, was a drow deity of shadow magic and thievery. Both deities were involved in a battle among the gods. However, an important page was torn from the book, halting their research any further. The group discussed the possibility of following the strange words of the drow goddess and travelling north, but they knew how dangerous it would be for Nora and Ren. As Ren grew more and more restless, confined within the guild headquarters, the group made the decision to take on a new mission. Their task was to infiltrate and disband an animal smuggling ring that had been active for about a year, selling magical animals on the black market. The group they sought was a two-day ride away, so the gang travelled into the Lashy once more to purchase horses, and through comically bad insight, they ended up buying two giraffes instead. We're on! Hello, and welcome to D20 Air, where we roll dice before one of our internet goes out. My name is Kate, I'm the DM. My name is Alice, I play Tam the half foot Bard. My name is Jess, I play Nora the Human Wizard. My name is Jules, I play Ren the Elven Ranger. My name is Maddie, I play Val the Tiefling Druid. And my name is Miller, and I play Augie the Human Paladin. Yay! Um, wow, it, it's weird because we played like a bunch of weeks in a row and then we took like three weeks off and so now it's like, oh my gosh, hello everyone, welcome back. Um, so, before we get started, we have uh, two quick things. First, we have our um, running thing, that feature trait that we've been doing. Uh, I've been writing a lot this morning, you guys. Um, that about uh, self-care ideas based on D&D classes. And today is cleric. And this one's pretty simple. It's just make sure that you take care of yourself. Um, if you're feeling sickly, make sure that you take the time to rest, recuperate. And if you need it, go seek professional help. Um, mental health-wise, it is just as important to take care of your mental health as well as your physical. So making sure that you listen to your body, take breaks when you need it. And yeah, if anyone has anything else they want to add that's along the lines of the cleric class. Well, I was listening to a podcast earlier and um there was like a really nice moment where someone on the podcast was saying that like anxiety is a liar which i think is a really good thing to remember that like if you're anxious and worried you don't like need to invalidate those feelings but it's you are fine and you are valid and anxiety is a big fat liar wow that really Sorry. wow yeah <laughs> No, 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 that, that hits. That's good. Yeah. Um, I never thought ooh. about it like that, but it just, but you're right. Yeah, I like yeah, that. I know, right? <laughs> I had it and I was like, oh my God, I literally was thinking about it all day. <laughs> um, I do know, uh, someone once told me that it's really helpful if you think of your anxiety and kind of like the bad thoughts as another person. Because if someone else is telling you something, you're like, oh, how dare you? Like, and you do things out of spite versus yourself telling it. And you're like, you're right. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that that's, that's really profound. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, the thing I wanted to say uh, that I forgot until just now is uh, people who are graduating, people who are doing school finishing up on that, great job. We're so proud of you. Um, I know that this kind of time is really hard, but
but you're special. You deserve to celebrate and you deserve to have that moment. So take that day for yourself. I had one yesterday. Very exciting. I didn't get a diploma, but I got this pen. So basically the same thing. <laughs> it's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. And to those going through finals, if you've done them already or if you haven't or if you're currently going through them, you have this. You got this. You're going to do good. Uh, you will pass all your finals. It'll be great. You guys got this. Also, this is not an announcement at all, but I'm wearing a beanie, and I never wear beanies, and I'm very excited about it. I'm like, okay, <laughs> here we go. Um, join the club. Okay. Come join the beanie club. Trying it. Okay. Anything else, or are we ready to get started? Okay. Okay. Oh, all right. So, last we left off left off wow we saw the gang as they were traveling and they passed through a mine town and had a little bit of discussion after leaving oliver in search of owen who is in clea right right yeah clea um i made up i made this entire world up and i still get clea and hegel confused in my head and so i have to be like um, <laughs> okay and so I headed to Clea in search of Owen, a peer or person that Oliver knows in hopes to get answers about some Elza Hymnian echoes and some weird stuff that just Oliver couldn't answer. And on the way, it was nearing sunset and they passed through the town of uh, <laughs> um, Bromsendriff. That's right. Oh, um, and, it's been three weeks, and, man. There are. Yeah, it's fine. fine. <laughs> yeah, and we're ushered inside to the Black Kettle Tavern and Tea House, where they were told that it is not safe to go out at night and kind of forced to spend the night under a discounted price. And having a bit of tea and a little bit of conversation, they met, I believe, Mano. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mano, uh, who told them about the Hanged Slicer, a ghost story about the next town over in Balmwich. And after that, uh, the gang went to bed in their separate rooms. And that is where we left off. So... Morning greets you all with the steady sound of rainfall and winds battering at the small rickety w windows in your room. You wake up after a, a slightly uncomfortable night in your respective rooms. You each wake up cold, not supernaturally or uncommonly so, like it's some kind of freezing spell or anything, but just the kind of cold that creeps into your spine and makes you want to curl into your blankets further and sleep away the day. Outside, it is just as bleak as when you arrived last night, but you now get a better look at the town in the slightly lighter exterior. The dark stained wooden exteriors of the building are meager and simple, with slick roofs that sleepily, steeply slope downward, built for excessive rainfall and function over aesthetic. The walls of the outside of these buildings each appear to be a mixture of a dark, nearly black stained wood and black and purplish brick. The large alleyways and roads lead out towards the fields in the distance. Uh, those of you n in the room that's not the queen size bed, so there's one room over here and then there were two over here. The two over here, um, you uh, are able to look out and you see a large river with a dark blue hue about two kilometers wide, rushing rapidly westward of you. A few hundred feet off from the current building you're in now is a long stone bridge that's very large and looks as though it's just on the edge of beginning to crumble. It is heavily blockaded from this side with a small guard station right along the banks of the river. So you all wake up to this kind of cold, rainy, windy day. down and get some breakfast all right so you all um 
yeah, you all wake up around the same time. Do you gather together or do you all head down? Just meet downstairs. Okay. Um, right as you hit the base of the stairs, uh, you hear kind of this kerfuffle and shifting of chairs and a wooden furniture scooting across the hardwood floor. And you hear the beginnings of yelling. And right as you get down, you see uh, Chem, the woman from last night, is standing at the door, one hand clutched on the door frame, the other curled around her cane that she's shaking violently in the air, yelling after an unseen uh, figure. And you just hear like, Curl Plucker! Ugh. Everything all right? Oh, huh. No, uh, yeah, no, everything's fine. Just this patron tried to pay for his room and services with a few silver thimbles. Thought he was clever and ran off. Yeah. Is and he, kind of hobbles is inside. He local? Can you, like, track him down and get no. him tail? It's fine. The infusers will catch him. He started running off towards the bridge. You know, it, I, we get it. Money isn't the easiest thing to come by, but, you know, money's tight for us, too. Yeah. I'm sorry. Did I did I wake you? No, we were already on the way down. <sighs> okay. Um. Well, uh, my husband's already off to the Meeport field this morning, but I promise, Mana, and I can try to be as entertaining as he was last night. Uh, <laughs> come on, let's get you something warm. It's cold enough already, <laughs> and lead you over, and you can either sit at the bar or the tables, looking around. Um, the patron with the hat from last night is no longer there, but the uh, dwarf at the bar kind of passed out is still there. A little groggy, kind of blinking his eyes, just holding a cup of tea, just staring. <laughs> Nothing, just... <laughs> um, turn to the rest of the group and be like, did anybody else see the, like, the Blue River? Yeah, it's like it's not normally things are normally that actually no what water is blue like sorry Kate was it like unusually blue <laughs> I was thinking like <laughs> oh. okay God, it's so been like, a long day you're so fine um so <laughs> it's not like the the the, the most unusual thing is the purple sediment is making it a bit of a darker blue than you would expect it looks like deep water ocean versus just like a river but what's really peculiar about it is how rapid of a pace it's rushing at it's pretty uh it's it's larger than it normally is you get the feeling that it might be because of the rainfall Right. Tam just stops talking a little bit in blood <laughs> <I don't laughs> <laughs> Yeah, forget it. It's fine. <laughs> it's also a relatively wide river, so the rushing is a little strange because normally the thinner it is, the more it'll rush, but it's big and still has that speed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it is a blue river, though. It's very pretty. God. Why did I think? I don't know. Um, <laughs> how did everyone sleep? <laughs> Super. <laughs> Does Ren actually do the finger dance? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> is Moroth with him? Yeah. He's just chilling. Ren's like, take a bite. <laughs> yeah, um, actually, by the way, so. In terms of breakfast items, there are, again, the uh, different teas of different qualities. There's the high quality one, the middle quality, and then there's the normal quality. There's a hot toddy if you really want alcohol this early in the morning. And then there's a lot of bakery items. So a large selection of biscotti. There's some shortbread. There's some coconut cake from last night. And then there's a few other things. There's a lot more scones. And Chem, actually, as she comes over, she goes, uh, here you go. Uh, if you'd like, you can look at the menu up there. I really recommend the Meeport. It's, it's very good, but um, the Dale Brew is also uh, very nice. Has a little bit of a kick, makes you a little bit more alert. 
Is there like anything in like the lower like range of pricing that's like similar to like an English breakfast like black tea? Yeah, yeah, we can we can give you just a simple just um the lower kind of quality that'll be about a copper cup okay. or a six copper pot if that's what you all are looking for. Should we just and get a pot yeah. for the table? Do you guys want like black tea? Black wine black tea? Is that okay? <laughs> if you're yeah, we'll gonna go for a black tea, I do strongly recommend the high the higher priced ones. They are pricier, but they they really do wake you up, especially on a day like this. How much for a pot? A pot is two gold, but it's very, very well worth it, I think. All right. I'll get a pot for the table. Thanks. Okay. Man. Thanks. Would man. you like a Meeport, Dale Brew, or Crenna? The middle one, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it brings you out a uh, pot of Dale Brew, and actually you watch as Manet is behind the counter, and he turns around and is filling with what appears to be this large, almost like faucet sink bronze fixture that is attached to a long glass cylindrical uh, container that is filled with loose leaf. And so he carefully grinds it out and it's, you're not only paying for the tea, you're also paying for the experience of this and slowly brings it out and you watch and brings it over. And there's a small hot pot uh, plate on the table that he sets the tea on, eventually brings it out, brings you all nice gold cups to drink out of. Um, they're made, they're ceramic, but they're painted with a nice gold. They're very, very gorgeous. And the teapot itself is a very gorgeous gold qu uh, color and quality. Eventually, it's it's a slow process, but eventually pours it for you. Are you all drinking it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you all drink it. Um, and you were, she was absolutely right. It, you, it makes you feel more alert. By the way, mark that two gold off. Makes you feel more alert, more uh, better. So until the next long rest, you each have advantage on in initiative checks. Oh, what? Wow. That's so good. Nice. Oh, my God. So advantage on initiative until the next long rest. On a caffeine high. Fuck yeah. Oh, my God. Did we just drink, yeah. like, a Red Bull? Is that what just happened? And we're on Red Bull for, like, the next... <laughs> well, see, the high-quality teas... Um, Depending on which kind, what family uh, tea baron you get, they each have different kind of effects mechanically. But um, non-mechanically in the game, it's just really good tea. Like, it's <laughs> so good. I believe you. Um, it's fucking rad. Do, you get, do they have any, like, um, like, I want to say, like, assortment of, like, pastries? Like, we could get, like, a plate full of, like, a bunch of different types of pastries for the table? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say that'd cost about three silver. All right. I'm going to do that. At this point, we're just, table. like, vicariously living what I want to be doing right now. Right. <laughs> I so brings over, uh, We've all been in quarantine nice... for a long time, this show. <laughs> <laughs> there's a Danish. There's a bear claw. There's a couple. There's uh, one that's got a really nice uh, cherry filling. There's some scones. It's what whatever you want. There's, a couple, there's like, a chocolate croissant. Really nice. Ren shares a scone with Maroth. I'm gonna take that bear claw. All right. What's a bear claw? Oh, I'm so sorry. It's like a, <laughs> it's like a, a kind of like a donut that mixed with like a cinnamon roll, kind of uh, like with nuts. Maddie, you got this. Um, that's not what our, my bear claws normally are. They're basically like um like uh, flaky pastry dough and they're kind of made and they take them and they like they bend them and they go like this kind of shape they're really flaky and they cover them with sugar on top normally that's what our bear claws are <laughs> i was thinking you know what it, you know no i think that that's correct i was thinking of an apple fritter because ah. i was just remembering i just went to like krispy kreme and i was just like yes that's what it was <sighs> <laughs> Wow, I think really they're, really, really, they're really buttery and flaky, so like they're really good to dip into tea. So very flaky crust. Buttery, flaky 
crust. <laughs> After we get all of our pastries and we are drinking tea, um, Augie's going to chime in and be like, so today we're just, what, are we just going to keep on going down on our route, crossing the river? Yeah, just make, watch out for that river, it's funny business, you know, being blue and all. Yeah, mm -hmm. not a lot of rivers are blue, you know. It's been this, that one. Tam aggressively drinks her tea. <laughs> Probably burns her lip. <laughs> Actually, no. Um, this tea, like it's, it's served to the, it's served in like the kind of uh, Japanese teacup style, which is it, like unless it's uncomfortable to uh, hold, it's like right. you can drink as soon as it's comfortable to hold. So it's Thanks. perfect. This high quality, there's no way you're burning yourself. You are so good. It's okay. it's too gold. You're solid um well how long is it from um do you know how how long we've got to go i've completely forgotten <laughs> um okay yeah. uh, i'm sorry right i'm here. really lost right now i can't remember what we're trying to do <laughs> <laughs> wait really uh, good at this game <laughs> it's fine it's been three weeks um and you guys are trying to meet so with owen who was a person that Oliver knew who's at the coast of Clea. And because you guys are trying to avoid the capital, which is kind of in the middle, you guys went up and around. Across the thing is Balmwich, which is the ghost town that you guys were told of last night. You also were told that the, the bridge to there is blocked off. Um, just a note. And you also, those of you who saw the bridge, also saw that there was a small guard post outside of it. Right. So current objective, get across the river? Yes, that is okay. long, short term. <laughs> I work well with short term goals. <laughs> There's also, no way I was for completely us wrong about the cookie. I was completely wrong. <laughs> I just looked up a bear clock. Kate, Kate was right. I was, I was wrong. <laughs> I'm Googling this shit myself. Come on, guys. <laughs> no, wait. This is what I was thinking of, which is called a Palmer's cookie. I have never yeah, seen that's... that in my entire life. They're really good. <laughs> and then a bear... Sure, there's, and, there's then a... Some... and then a bear um... call looks like this. Yeah. Uh, got okay. it. Got it. Okay. I know that because of a Weird Al Yankovic song. <laughs> <laughs> and then in Canada, we have beaver tails, and I'm not even kidding. They're so good. Oh my God. They're just giant, flat, sugary, delicious things. And you get it like bears. <laughs> All right. So you guys uh, finish breakfast. It's delicious. Like it, it sits in your stomach, but in the way that it like warms you from head to toe, not in like the rock way. And um, it's really nice. Hey. So we need to go from. We need to get across that bridge. All right, but it's blocked off. Or we'll find a different way across the river. We could just ask if we can go. They might be like, well, we kind of don't want people to go over, but if it's your prerogative to do it, then like, whatever the fuck, like, do whatever you want. Um, or they could be, yeah. But if they really don't want people going across, then they might keep an extra eye on us if we do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. We could always just, I know, if someone could go up, up like, disguised and ask and be mm. like, Hi, I'm a completely different person. Um, see what the love down is and then come back. I could be an old yeah. woman. Again. Oh my god, please be an old, <gasps> old woman again. Old woman, come back. It's the... <laughs> Would Maybe you like I to do it? I feel like it's my true form, frankly. Yeah. Maybe I could be an old man with you. <gasps> Absolutely. <laughs> Into it. The old Let's rub some glue on our faces. Come true. <laughs> That's how you do it. <laughs> Alright, are we, are we making you up to be old people? Yes. Yes, please. Gonna work out my disguise kit. <laughs> yeah. Very excitedly. Okay. 
Um, make a sleight of hand check. Make two of them. While this is happening, I I did a pretty bad job of making notes on your story at the end of last session, but I yeah. vaguely, I vaguely remember. Was there an old lady? Was there, there an was old no lady? Was there, there an was evil old lady. lady? They said um, that an old lady. Or a demon was disguised as an old lady, yeah. and they captured the old lady, and they were like, "Hey, we're gonna, um, we're gonna kill you." And the old lady was like, "Oh my goodness, please don't!" And they didn't fall for it. And then they went to execute her, and then the old lady was like, "Ha ha, I'm really a demon," and killed everyone. Fine. I was just thinking back to that one time he That's was attacked, attacked by an old lady. <laughs> Is it the same old lady? <laughs> just, you don't know. Just, um, so, I connected um, them. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't connect shit. <laughs> I rolled, uh, I rolled two fours. Oh my so, God. um, <laughs> yeah, th that's gonna be a hot six for both. Oh no! Okay. Um, you both solidly look like an old man and woman couple in like a middle school production of Annie. <laughs> like like baby powder in the hair, uh, the crow's feet that are drawn to like here. Like you could probably pass from a distance, maybe. Great, cool. Uh, I feel like this is not your best work. I Definitely not. I I am so sorry, but this is not great. If you guys had cameras, this would be like great blackmail footage, like that kind of thing. <laughs> just, just click. <laughs> Can I use prestidigitation to like clean up any of this? Sure, sure. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, you clean it up and it looks it looks a bit nicer. I'm not gonna make you roll for that. That feels like like it's it's not solid 2020 because it's not like you've got a hat of disguise, but it it looks a little yeah. bit more. It looks a little bit better. Okay. Ren will do the same thing then. Okay. So yeah, you press the digitate and the crow's feet shrink a little. They're a little bit. That's good. Kind of like taking powder and you put it over a little bit. It looks a little better. <laughs> Take the powder puff and beat your face and then come out looking like a drag queen. Yeah, your Ben Knight kits really come in. Uh, <laughs> help here. Okay. Yeah. So now you officially look like old men and women, kind of. And Chem is just kind of standing there. Uh, I mean... The guards aren't the smartest people. Oh, but they're gonna stay like a couple of meters back, like fifty meters back, and just yell, <laughs> I know. right? Well, I mean, Kristoff will probably give you a bit of trouble, but Topher, he's he's harmless. So, Kristoff and Topher, Christopher. Yeah. <laughs> Their Maybe. name is just a person's name. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> oh, they're dating now. They're dating now. That's perfect. Amazing. Excellent. Well, shall we go? We're just yeah. trying to see if they let us across, right? And if they do, we'll be like, cool, we'll come back later. I'm gonna, uh, Chem kind of is like, I'm gonna save you the trouble. They, look, there used to be guards and things that they would do look a lot of people went over and they didn't come back you guys seem like good people but they're probably not gonna let you pass you tell us this after we put <laughs> on the old age makeup <laughs> I think your friend here should get some practice definitely needs it but um it's <laughs> It looks great. It, it, you know, who am I to judge? So, maybe we need a new plan. Maybe we like we're ailing and we need to be taken to a doctor. But the only one that can fix what we're ailing with 
is across the river. Feel bad for the old people. Let us through. Yeah. Or we could, yeah. I mean, we could yeah. do that. Or we could just like properly scare them into letting us across. Like, we could be really intimidating. Scare the guards. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Go Ooh, like, actually, that's not a bad idea. We could go like, like weapons and shit. We could like pretend to be the thing, things from the story. Not the, I remember the story at all, but <laughs> old lady already. Scary old demon, lady. devil, demon, De- demon, demon. No, okay. headed slicer. So you get the feeling that it has to deal with slicing. Uh, I could wield a knife. I mean, I've got charm okay. person. I could just. I, I, think I feel like that there. would be the better. Charm person might be the best plan. Yeah, actually, I forgot about magic, so... <laughs> <laughs> we went straight to uh, face makeup. <laughs> My instinct was, like, this batch <laughs> fucking scheme. <laughs> I'm an elf! <laughs> yeah, I can, I can charm them both. <laughs> yeah, let's do that one. Let's Hell do yeah. that one. No more suggestions from men, thank you. <laughs> He's on a caffeine high, it's fine. <laughs> We're teasy. So do you just wipe this off now? No, no I'm keep it, I'll keep it on. Okay. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Yeah, let's head out. Okay, so you make, so you guys carefully, are you guys doing this stealthily or like... I, if we're gonna charm them, we, why am I speaking in character? If we're gonna charm them, we might as well just walk straight the fuck up. Yeah. Uh, so you all walk up to it. It's a small shack, kind of no more than two to three people can fit in this thing, um, with a uh, bright red slick roof that stands out from the dark exteriors of the rest of the town, kind of like a, a reddish beacon almost. The shack sits flush with the side of the bridge, and there is a long plank of wood attached to a lever that looks long rusted. It looks absolutely rusted, and there are crates and bricks stacked up, a crudely made but very sturdy barricade that is blocking off the bridge for any traversers. And there you see that there is, it's raining, it's, it's raining, not not pouring, but it's pretty heavily raining at this point. And there are there's one guard inside the shack, and there's one right outside, but is kind of pressed underneath the roof, trying to get some cover. You get the feeling that they don't get a lot of excitement over here. And uh, as you walk up, one of them goes, uh, "Hey, hey, 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 hey!" Um, sorry, there. We need you to move. Up. By the way, um, before this, are you guys getting your cart? And horses, or are you guys? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Get the okay, okay. So on the cart. Oh, uh, sorry. There, uh, we don't allow merchants or anything. You're gonna have to go about two miles down, and there's a bridge down there that you can go. This section's blocked off. Um, uh, oh, but oh, n- thanks. Um, you're gonna make an exception for us, though, right? And then I cast charm person. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> is that a wisdom? That is wisdom save, and they got um, yeah, a wisdom is it sixteen. Both of them? Can or... I see the second one? There, yeah, it's like one glass window. Sorry, I didn't explain it very well. Uh, glass yeah, window. Sure. one in the chat. Cool. Okay. I'll do. Yeah, I'll do them both. Okay, so the first one rolled a four, Sick. and the nice. second one, ooh, rolled a six. It's still plus zero, so uh, they both fail. So, oh, uh, yep. Yeah. Nice. So they go. Right. Yeah, uh, of course. Uh, we're going to need to move all this stuff, though. That's probably going to. You know what? It's it's fine. Uh, do you have Thanks a way to. Thanks so much. Uh, the cart might be a bit of an issue, but, you know, you all are such nice people. I'm sure we can make an exception. Um, so, if we're good out here, let's move some carts. And Topher's like, oh. Yes, of course, of course. Uh, so lovely. We barely, rarely get people traveling, traveling over here. Be careful. Uh, it's probably going to be a bit slick. And they're taking the <laughs> crates one by one and kind of passing them along until... How long does it last? Turn person? Um, 
I think it's an uh, hour. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you guys wait about 15 minutes unless you want to try and help them move yeah. these crates. Can I just ask them while they're doing it and just say, um, yeah. is there anything, have you seen anything on the other side, um, like recently? Oh, <laughs> uh, it's two kilometers. I try not to look out there, you know. Uh, Topher here, he's a little bit of a scary cat. <laughs> he's not the best at, you know, ghosts and shit, so. Yeah. All right. Okay. Fair enough. There were some teenagers that came in about uh, a month ago or so. Came back with all kinds of scratches, but hey, at least they came back, you know? <laughs> oh, wow. That's <laughs> ominous. Right. Well, uh, it's just kind of. Day you've got, you don't want to work in the tea fields. And it's continuing. Okay. <laughs> uh, wow, there's such a lag in Skype. Um, okay, so eventually the crates are packaged up. And they kind of, uh, uh, rust might be a bit of an issue. We can try and pull it up, maybe. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys are strong we maybe we can goes over and starts trying to lift yeah yeah that fell down that fell off uh tries gets it a little i'd say about like a foot higher and it's kind of and it it kind of gets to a point where he's like <sighs> we can probably help right yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I can. <laughs> you guys are so kind. Yes, you, that would be great. And so you guys all go over. Um, yeah, all of you guys roll strength checks. Mm-hmm. If there's um, friend's not helping. <laughs> 17. That was not the thing. She's watching. Um, 11. <laughs> okay. <laughs> They rolled a 3 and a 19, uh, but that 19 is really helpful, and, and that 17. So you guys manage to eventually, it takes good two minutes, and like when you finish, you kind of have the little tingles in your arms after you lift something really heavy, but you're able to get it about three-fourths of the way up, so not fully, but enough that you can get your cart through if you squeeze to the side. Thank uh, you guys so much. Help. Oh, of course. You know, it's just it's just so nice to see visitors. You know, it's nice to see the bridge it's used. So nice to see you. <laughs> yeah, I really hope you don't die over there. Yeah, me too. Thanks. Yeah, you know, that would, that would suck. <laughs> All right. Um, well, bye. Bye. Thank you so much bye. for vi- visiting. Have a great day. They kind of both stand there waving, getting soaked in the rain. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> Um, so as you step on the bridge you see that it's made of cobblestone and you can also see that there are small weeds and green plants that are sprouting in between and also in like the cracks and then also some of them are sprouting on the stone themselves cracking it Uh, similar to the streets of Velashi sort of after you woke up after the amalgamation that kind of uh, look along the sides there is algae growing on the legs and the river is uh, violently crashing that would cover up the sounds that would alert the guards to your presence if you had not charmed them so uh good good job on that you solved my puzzle <laughs> solved um, my bridge puzzle <laughs> solved my bridge puzzle congratulations um all right um the rain that's pouring down, as they mentioned, makes the ground beneath you really slippery. And those of you with lower dexterities, you find yourselves like tripping and catching yourself. None of you taking any real damage, but enough to get kind of the bits of your stuff wet. You guys are all, by the way, it's raining. So you guys are kind of drenched at this point. Great. Um, about halfway across, you realize that the air around you has gotten about two degrees cooler. And you're able to see your breath very easily as you continue across. And right as you reach the edge of the bridge, this two-kilometer-long bridge, 
there is a large stone archway with bomb witch transcribed in the top with the crudely etched little T between the I and the C. As you step across the threshold, a chill runs down your spine. The warmth that you felt from the T now long gone. And despite the rain not letting up, the town is strangely silent. For a moment, there's there's nothing. You, you see the rain hitting the everything around you, but it's almost as though you've lost your hearing for a second. It's completely silent. And then you see the fog slowly begin to roll. Um, then eventually, you kind of you kind of realize slowly. You hear a little like tin like hi in your ears and all of a sudden the rain begins to pour harder than it has previously rain clouds uh completely cover the sky it's a and unlike the sunset and sunrise it's kind of taken up the fey wild kind of space earlier it's completely gray and the rain is unrelenting this, the fog covers the town, making it difficult to see too far in the distance, but not so thick that you can't see each other in front of you. But about 50 feet out, it's just fog. Is there tree cover, or are all the trees bare? Uh, there's actually no trees in this immediate vicinity, but what there are are very large buildings that are even up to the banks of the river. And the buildings in front of you are, they're looming and they're covered in dark purple vines and weeds. Very similar to Bromsadreef, but at the same time, it's slightly different. The roofs themselves, they're not treated with the same water resistance. And so there's a lot of them that are, that are or are on the very edge of caving and coming in. The buildings on the banks of the river themselves look as though they're slightly leaning in, kind of the erosion taking away the foundation of them, of the buildings and leaving them kind of leaned over. It looks as though it's about to, it looks kind of like encroaching and it, it feels kind of claustrophobic in a sense, despite the openness of the town. Um, the corruption of nature it has crept into every inch of this place. That's not just due to the Feywild magic, but also from years of abandonment. And instead of the bright colors you've grown used to with that, uh, the vegetation has lost all of its saturation, leaving it just black with little tips of purple, which make it very difficult to perceive and shadow and the entire town actually is covered in shadow from both the buildings and this cloud cover. You're having a difficult time seeing. Uh, by the way, Val, in case this wasn't clear, you recognize this all too well as a long abandoned but still standing bomb. Yeah. Did anybody else hear that high-pitched noise. Yeah. Um, By the way, Val, can you make a wisdom saving throw for me, please? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> not, not with the thing. Just with the, the regular, yep. Yeah, not with advantage, though. Not with advantage. No. That's fine. <laughs> uh... That's a hot seven. Seven? Oh. Seven? Okay. I got, I got a two. We're rolling oh so God. well today, guys. Okay. okay, cool. Thank you. Um, so, you all continue on. So our current objective is just to get through Bomb Witch so that we can get to 
Owen, Owen. Okay. We have to get go through. We're, are we going through Bombwich to get to Clea? But like to get to the outskirts, oh, or not Clea? Or get outskirts of the capital, so then we can get into the capital without being detected. Oh. Well, no, we're trying to avoid the capital altogether. Oh um, right. Yeah. Um, this like spooky ass route in order to not go on like the main road. Yeah. So we're taking the side streets is what I'm is what we're we're doing. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Got it. You're taking the side streets? No, no, no. Like <laughs> <we're> metaphorically. <laughs> I was like, I was like, we can. No, no, metaphorically <laughs> to get to Owen, we're taking the side streets instead of taking the main route to go through the city, the the capital. Got it. We had to we had to regroup. It's been a bit. <laughs> Okay, so um, just to give you a note about this, the uh, makeup of the town is dispersed very much like uh, Bromsidrif. There are Bromsidrif. There um, is a main road that is very large, meant for carts and commerce, that has long abandoned shops lining the road, and there are poor residencies tucked away behind it. And then there are wealthier estates clustered out around the tea fields that extend, that are very much overgrown. Uh, there are only two of these mansions in comparison to across the river where there are three. So you can take, you, if you want to, you can take the side routes. You can go kind of back further or you can walk through this middle part. I think we just sort of take the most direct route. Yeah. Yeah. Walk yeah. in the middle. Yeah. Okay, uh, and by the way, Ren, with your passive perception, as you are walking through this, actually, no, all, well, all of you, and then I'll tell you what, Ren, you notice, um, all of you get this feeling, it's, it's unsettling, and it's like right here at the base of your skull, and you can just feel like there are eyes on you. And you can't shake that feeling. It's just like right in the back, kind of that you look around and you don't see anything but just shadow, but just that creeping feeling that you're being watched. Ren, you actually, you don't know if it's real or if it's just paranoia, but you just hear the slight like whispers and you don't know whether it's caused by the wind or maybe something whispering itself. <laughs> but you just, in the base of your skull, it's not just that you can feel the eyes on you. You can also hear the whispers and the gossip as you guys continue on. Um, and you get you get a little ways in. Um, this is it's a long it's a long strip, kind of based on the former very well traveled road. That the more time you spend here, the the more someone will be willing to spend money. So it's it's a pretty long, thin kind of town. But you get a little ways in uh, before the the rain is relenting, but off in the distance, you hear this large crash and clanging of glass and metal, and you hear like a small kind of like shite off um, a, a few ways it's to the left. Like coming from a, a home? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you look, you don't see anything, but just. I thought nobody was supposed to be in this town anymore. Yeah. The might not be a person, might be something, might be an animal, could be it going through the house. Shit. Yeah, it spoke, it cursed at us. <laughs> oh, I thought that that was the sound of crashing. It br Skype broke up for a second, so I thought it was just like, <sighs> not uh. shit. <laughs> um, both, it was both. It was a crash and then a shit. So we could look into the thing making the crashing sounds or we could just keep going what do you think 
Well, the thing that made the crashing sound might come near us, and I'd rather know what it is before it gets here. <laughs> before yeah. it before it realizes we are here, that's what I meant to say. Can we so stealth? <laughs> that's true. We should yeah, it could we should maybe be stealthing. Stealth. Yeah. Um mm, yeah. Could I yeah, that's a good idea though, Alice. Could I roll perception and just try to like see if I could peer through a window or like Sure, uh, sure. Ow. Are you gonna go look? Uh I might like stand up on the cart, do a little meerkat business, you know. Okay. Uh roll a perception check, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh eight. Um the only thing you notice Eight. Mm. Um, my passive you, is yeah, but this is like you're actively the yeah. rain makes it really difficult to see, and you kind of like look around, you see something kind of bounce out a wind out, out uh, an open door frame, just like a small little thing, and kind of roll. It's just like a small ball, but other than that, nothing. Okay. So you don't see what it is, you just see that there's something in a house. Well, it's definitely that house, because something just rolled out of it. Uh, sorry, this old age makeup is just, like, in my eyes at this point. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, just fucking rub it off, it's fine. It's, 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 it's off rain because of the rain. Yeah. Off, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's just, like, black eyeliner just smeared it, down it his face. It was beautiful so. while it lasted. Up it off. Should we should we stealth then and just keep going, or do we want to investigate the thing making the crashing and the saying shit and stuff? Would, would Val know what it is by any chance? Because this is uh, roll a uh, roll an intelligence check. Okay. Mm, what is intelligence? Alright, I think I just forgot how to be a person for a second. <laughs> Seventeen. Seventeen. Um, you get the... You know that ghosts and, like, spooky supernatural stuff that you guys are kind of, like, on edge about, they normally don't curse and cause crashing. Like, if they cause a crash, they don't normally stay shite afterwards. But, um, yeah, with the 17, uh, it doesn't seem as though it would necessarily be something spooky, but it very clearly sounds like a person, and you may or may not want to be near a person right now, depending on your goals. I could do a little sneak and try and, you know, peer through a window if you want. Yeah, you're the, probably the best idea. Try to figure out who it is before we go knocking on any doors. Yeah. Okay, can I, can I stealth up to the house and look through the window? <laughs> okay, uh, make a perception check. <laughs> <laughs> Do I need to make a stealth check too? No, he's not paying attention. Okay. I rolled a two for him. Ten. Ten? Okay. Um, you don't Looking in, you see what appears to be like a somebody hunched over, and is in yellow and orange robes, kind of like like a long skirt with some orange like god like you can just see the base of their shoes, and it's just these god awful orange shoes, and uh, this yellow skirt that's just caked in mud and dripping with water, and it's just under something throwing be things behind them. Oh, I see. I'll go back to the cart and just be like, well, it's about as unintimidating as a person can be. They're wearing orange, for God's sake. I think oh we're safe. <laughs> uh, if we want to approach them, we can. And I don't think, I, I don't know, it's five, five, one, two, five against one. So, you know. Up to you guys. I don't. I don't. Meh. If they're like minding their own business, then 
Although it is weird that there's someone in a town that apparently is abandoned, but yeah. I don't know. If they don't have any business with us, then... Yeah, I don't know. Should we keep keep going then? <laughs> what well, you guys we, doing? We what are you doing? going and then if they want to... want to keep going. <laughs> okay. So you guys keep going. Do, do we? I don't, uh, do, nobody's answering me. <laughs> <laughs> You're muted, Jess. Like... <laughs> yes, let's go. <laughs> okay, you guys can do, keep going. Okay. No problem. We'll just skip that. Um. Okay. <laughs> no, no, you guys, you guys are fine. All right. So... As you continue, you get to where it looks like it's the center of town. And in the center of town, there is a very large courtyard that is completely untouched by the twisted nature that seems to surround the town. As you begin to step in, you notice, first of all, the rain all of a sudden lets up. The scene is still dark, but it's almost like there is an invisible umbrella keeping nature and water and anything from disrupting the scene. In the center, there stands a large platform that while once completely shattered, you can see it has nails and boards crudely fashioned to it that keep it standing and there is a staircase that leads up to the small platform with a fixture attached and there's a long dangling rope with a noose tied at the end cut where um, the neck would generally be now it's just gently drifting in the wind Hmm. but that's not the most jarring thing cool because in circles slowly radiating out from this you see humanoid figures sitting cross legs hands in lap all just staring and they're a head fixated on this gently hanging rope you'd say about two to three hundred figures just sitting cross legged Okay. Do they look real? And none of them like... seem to turn around. None of them turn around. None of them seem to notice your arrival. All of them just staring at this thing. Her head up. You actually can't see any of their faces right now. They're hooded? So like they're just like no. staring? No. Oh, okay. Some of them have hair. Some of them, uh, they look all like normal people. Just is is all... they're like corporeal, like just human? Are they wearing like normal clothes? Do they have like? They're, they're all wearing normal clothes. Do you go up to investigate? Skin? Not, not, no. <laughs> I'm just, I'm looking. I'm not <laughs> saying where I is. <laughs> okay, uh, make a perception check. Um, well, these have gone yeah. well today. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a two and then a four. Let's see if I can get a six. I got a seven. Uh, hey! Hey! No, 13. 13. 13. Okay. Um, kind of look and try to glance hard at one. The, um, without the rain, it's still dim light, but being able to look, you see that most of their skin is, it looks human, um, but it's got kind of like a graying feature. And there's a couple of them that it, it looks like pockmarked in various places. And what's peculiar is that they're all in the exact same position as well. Right arm or right leg crossed over left, right hand in left. Staring. So maybe they're dead, maybe. <laughs> so so we've been speaking like out loud like not to them but like we've been talking and they just haven't moved is well, there a way like is there a route through them or route around them where we can like circumvent the 
and yeah. courtyard and not go straight <laughs> yeah. through them. Um, <laughs> but first, Val, mm -hmm. I need a wisdom saving throw plus a d10. Got it. Just tell me what you get for the wisdom save first. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. Okay. 22. The oh. wisdom saving throw. And Z10. Okay. Come on, baby! <laughs> <laughs> ah! That's a hot three. Nine. Okay. Wait, hold on. Three. Wait. Nope, yeah, you're right. Three. Okay, so three. So three? Three. Three. Cool. Um, uh, I am um, going to, oh, sorry. Okay. You go, you go. I'm going to turn to the group and I like to describe like what's happening with my face and stuff like that. Okay, go for it. Cool. <laughs> um, I'm going to turn to the group and my face is kind of going to change and I'm going to look terrified best I can. And I'm going to say, Help, not me. Then it's gonna go back to normal. Oh fuck! Oh fuck! Oh fuck! Oh fuck! Okay. What? Okay, um, I think Val has maybe been possessed this whole time. <laughs> but she's she's normal. She's she's been normal. I think I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was a little tiny window of Val. And. Oh boy. What? Rent's got like a hand on his sword. He doesn't know what the fuck is happening. Before that, Ren, can I get you to make a perception check for me? <laughs> <laughs> it's another fucking seven. Okay. <laughs> I'm not um, over a seven today. Out of the corner of your eye, um, across this courtyard. Look. You see a little flash of something that quickly ducks behind a wall. Is it orange? <laughs> no, it is not. Is it oh, orange? no. <laughs> Good. Um, Hold this you guys, might, this is going to be fun. Um, um, this might be a very stupid idea, but I'm going to cast Divine Sense really fast. Yeah! Okay. What the fuck? I forgot about magic again. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot of telly oh for that. God, so I know the lo so I basically would know the location of any celestial fiend or undead within sixty feet. That's such a good idea. Fiend, celestial, undead. That's it. Yeah. Yes. How far? How? What's the radius? Sixty feet. Okay. <laughs> ha! Sixty feet. Um. You do sense something. You are aware of approximately a hundred undead surrounding oh. you in the shadows. <laughs> I'm gonna tell them that. I'm gonna say, oh, guys. But there's, but there is nothing um, that pops up in your group. Oh, and there's, there's, it's faint. It's not there but there's a little from the bodies just just faint just the cross-legged people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just, that, okay. the, the, just that they're, they're bodies <laughs> it's all undead though no fiend well no no fiend um so there are um, undead watching us from the shadows but the people yes. cross-legged are just straight up dead yeah i don't it's like Okay, a, more a faint bit of undead from the people. What, what are we doing about not bow? Can we just yeah? Can we go back? To There's the, a lot happening. What, what does Val look like now? What's Val yeah. doing? She's Val's just totally fine. Yep, I'm Val's just a little off. concerned actually on uh, the face because you guys are all like all of a sudden looking at her. She's kind of what? What, what did I do? Uh, okay. Just for funsies, just in case. I also want to cast Primeval Awareness. Okay. So, similar thing, but it's within one mile, and it's Aberrations, Celestials, Dragons, Elemental, Fae, Fiends, or Undead. 
I'm guessing we'll get a lot of undead. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> there are... And this is one mile. Okay, <laughs> first, undead. Mm-hmm. There are about uh, 300. Cool. Ah! <laughs> um, <laughs> there is one. Mm-hmm. No dragons, no celestial. Um, <sighs> God. God, there's no dragons. Today, there are... Um, anything else? Uh, 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 it was a- any aberrations? Or elementals? Oh. Or fey? Uh, four fey. No elementals, no aberrations. Okay. Well, cool. <laughs> right. So, um... Oggy. Yeah. Do you have any sort of like greater restoration sort of thing that you can, or restoration magic, any. Mm. I have, I have Lester Restoration. Lester what Restoration. Do you, I think greater Restoration is like a fifth level spell. Yeah. Um, what does Lesser Restoration cure? Blindness, uh, being deafened, paralyzed, or poisoned. Do you have any? Mm, never mind. Never I mind. have zone of truth. Okay, that could, may, maybe, maybe we could try that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Sure. But, mm, which is more urgent, the not Val or the three hundred undead surrounding us? <laughs> they are both bad. Yeah. Why do I? I have a horrible feeling. I don't like the fact that they're just sitting there watching and being yeah. still. And I feel like they're just going to turn around and like unhinge their jaw or something. Well, so maybe we should like go to a side street or get out of wherever we are. Yeah, maybe we should hide. Yeah, like, well, maybe we just try to get the fuck out of this town and then we deal with the other thing. Yeah. That's yeah. probably the best idea. Yeah, let's, let's GTFO. Okay. Um, as you all, are you guys circumnavigating the, the Yeah, we're not going to go or... straight through the fucking center. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, thank you. With so, a cart, um, like, fucking knocking over bus. <laughs> so, as you all are going past, Ren, you look over um, to that thing. Do you, do you care about the thing that you saw, or...? I am curious, yes. Okay. <laughs> um, so, um, you see on the outskirts of the wall of the rain on the opposite side, just barely poking out, you see what appears to be a little girl. About ah, um, no. <laughs> eight or nine years old. God <laughs> oh, damn uh, it. <laughs> she, she has incredibly pale skin. Um, white <laughs> skin, actually. Uh, contrasted with Long black hair that's a matted and disheveled, <laughs> gathering down the small of her back, uh, around large white horns on her head. Um, she is wearing a right a uh, red and purple tunic, tied. Excuse me. <laughs> and there's a long necklace with a large glittering dark stone laid in a strange shape that's hanging. She stares at you kind of eyes wide. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Perception check. I'm gonna make a perception check. <laughs> Since I already am looking at it, does it bear a resemblance to Val? Uh, looking close, it looks like like a small version of her companion Val. Twelve. <laughs> and you see as she's staring at you eyes wide. <laughs> and Wait, what was the end of that sentence? I didn't hear that. You you cut out. <laughs> Please read. And then takes off running. 
Do we need to catch the mini baby Val thing? <laughs> let's, let's go after mini Val. I'm so sorry, but I'm going to jump out of the cart. I'm going to run after the child. Oh, no. <laughs> guys, so you guys, yep. so you guys are all in pursuit of this child. Um, I mean, can you guys make just dexterity checks for me? See how fast yeah. and how mm-hmm. nimbly mm-hmm. It's a window swiftly. Oh, Val, you get advantage because you are, this is your hometown. I know the, lovely. You know this, you know this place well. Um, 20, not quite, nice. What, what? 17. (laughs) 17, okay. Yeah. Well, because you guys are, are you guys using the cart? Are you taking the cart with you? I think. Oh, Val jumped I'm on, yeah, I, I'm I on foot. We're just abandoning. You, yeah. We're just jumping out and following. Yeah. Okay. God. Is Morose so, coming? What about the yeah. horses, guys? Yeah. Come on now. Oh, that's oh. right. That's right. There is a, a, a two fiends. Because I forgot about Morose. I'm sorry. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I, I got a six. Morose is a fiend. Yeah, he ain't no normal dear. So, Tam, you're having a little bit of a difficult time seeing in the rain. Uh, did everyone else score above a 10? I got, I got a 10. 8. Okay, so um, Nora and Tam, you guys are having a bit of trouble with this. Um, but the little girl sneaks her way through the town, the direction you guys are going, uh, ducking around corners and past building, buildings. And Val, you got a head start, so you're definitely able to. And Ren, being a, a ranger, uh, you guys are surprisingly able to keep chase with her. And eventually she reaches the edge of town and runs up to a small cottage located just outside the fields. And you watch as she carefully undoes the latch and runs inside, leaving the door open behind her. This doesn't feel like a trap at all. Mm-mm, no, not at all. Do I recognize the cottage? You do. <laughs> Right. Do you recognize the cottage? Um, yes, this is the cottage that used to belong to your parents. Oh, God, fuck me. Um, uh, I'm going to follow the girl into the hat. It's your backstory, <laughs> baby. <laughs> yeah. I'm with you. I wish y'all could feel how fast my heart is going right now. <laughs> Ooh, let's right. go, let's go, let's go. I'm going to follow the girl into the hatch. Okay. You see, um, you make it as far as the doorway, and you see her form, which is facing away from you, twisting and writhing and choking for air and screaming as her form twists and grows. She's down on all fours and lets out a painful scream and then stops. And all of a sudden, stands up in full form, Reaching a height where she's nearly has to duck her head, not to hit her head on the ceiling, and turns around. And you see a woman with, uh, I'd say, Ren, you're about caught up at this point, and the rest of you are slowly catching up as this goes. And you see a woman with the same dark, black, matted hair, but instead of white, you see purplish skin almost as though her entire body is covered in a darkened bruise. Her face is disgusting. Uh, It's varying shades of purple and black and blue and green that's just swollen and oversized with large, beady, yellow eyes and a crooked, pointed smile. She has smaller black horns that curl to scrape the tips of her ears, and you see there's actually a little bit of blood from where the scrape hits. And uh, fingers and limbs that are just slightly too long to be human. And despite her horrid appearance, she has a a scattering of almost pinkish red across her cheeks. And Val is cautious to meet your gaze as she takes a deep breath and says, And how was my performance, Valeria? I know the final form isn't the same. Was the transformation at least close? Yeah, a little bit. Mm. (sighs) Not one. 
my heart. But where are my manners? Come in, come in. I've heard so very much about you. And I'm such a fan of your work. And beckons you into the, the room. I'm gonna walk in. <laughs> the rest of you are uh, catching up at this point. Did you see Val walking into I, the room? I'm with Val, I guess, going in, I guess. Yeah. Sure. All right. So uh, the smell actually is the first thing that hits you. It's like a punch to the gut. It's a mixture of sulfur and rotten decay. It, it's almost like putrid mushrooms mixed with just like the rotten gums of something and death just everywhere. There is a bed rotten and molded in on itself that is stained red and the rest of the simple dwelling has taken on features of the pungent rotten exterior with a kitchen space covered in fungi and bottles and varying liquids and items. But visually, the, the most striking thing is along this back wall, there appears to be a painting of rooms and just crudely kind of painted drawing, kind of like a child's finger painting, all in a very Icarus reddish black mixture. It's, there's a number of rubble stacked with different articles sitting in bottles. One has a couple of teeth. There's a small bottle of blood, a small vial, and uh, a small blanket, and dried and wilted herbs, all sitting around a large black chair. On either side of the chair are uh, two corpses um, that appear to be holding hands and are decaying and face downward. And the chair and these artifacts seem to be the only thing that have a meticulously kept kind of diligence to them. The rest of it has been let go. Um, the woman ushers you in and says, please sit. And gestures for you, Val, to sit in the large chair. All right, I guess I'm gonna go sit in the chair. <laughs> um, she kind of, are any of you guys, the rest of you guys coming inside? I'm already in. Yeah, we're rushing okay, in. Okay, all of you come? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Tam, you're probably the last one. As you come in, she snaps her finger and the door <laughs> slams behind you. And with another small, like, twitch of her finger, a cushion flies out from under where the sink was and carefully scoots it as she sits down, kind of places her hands on her, um, underneath her chin and goes, So tell me everything, Valeria. My little pets only know so much, and I am ravenous to hear the full tale. I'm gonna look at the lady and go, um, you, you haven't introduced yourself yet. I still don't know your name. Where are my manners? My name is Acridia Grindangler. Of course, I know so much about you. Can you repeat that? Not in the accent, because I did not get a single yeah. word of that. Uh, <laughs> I'm Dangler. So, like, acrid, yeah, grime dangler. Grand dangler? Grime dangler. Grime. Like, grime, grime dangle. Okay. She is gross. Yes, cool. Really? Yes. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> so she's just standing there, just uh, or sitting there, kind of like knees tucked up, and sitting, just staring at you. Just. How do you know so much about me? Uh, my pets, they talk. Don't they, Corval? And points, and uh, you see as from one of the corpses, this dark shadow rises, and you just hear, <sighs> before it goes back down, she goes, 
you know, these two, they're so boring. The others have nothing but hatred for you. These two don't. That. <laughs> they're important to you, so they're important for my collection. <sighs> so, so you have those two, but you don't have the other one? I couldn't find the other one. Do you know where she is? I can complete my collection. <sighs> oh, that should be exciting. Do you like it, by the way? It's very nice. Um, can I like can I like look at the the stuff that she has there as yeah. well? Okay. Yeah. Um. Looks to be small teeth. Um. There's a a, a vial of blood, and there's a, a blanket, a small little blanket that's long been faded, and then there's some some herbs. The blanket. Does that match the one that I have? Mm-hmm. Cool. 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 Love that. <laughs> Um, and you said the corpses are holding hands, right? Yep. Oh, great. Cool. <laughs> so you, you haven't found, you haven't found the, the, the wreckage yet, have you? You haven't found the home. But you found them. Yeah, oh, where? They should be, they should have been with the wreckage. They were. Yet she's missing. Strange, isn't it? I looked for a while. And I'm still looking. Do you not know where she went? At last I saw her, she was in the ground with uh, them. So, unless she's walking around, I, I haven't seen her since, since that night, so... I'll have to scry on her soon. It's delicious. I never thought that she might be alive. Mm. A companion, then. So, but enough about me. I want to know more about you. They told me parts of the story, but you know the others, the. Boring, mundane. They don't. I don't see things fully. I'd love to get your side. Well, they weren't there most of the story. They missed out. Where did they leave off? There was something about an execution. I know all about. How did you get caught in the first place? I got caught? Wait, what? <laughs> mm -hmm. Where did I get caught? Okay. Um, I did get caught, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> yes, you did. I did. I'm trying to remember when I got caught. <laughs> Are you pulling up your backstory? I am! I forgot what I got caught! <laughs> it's a long backstory. I forgot. When did I get caught? Come on, Google Drive. Do your thing. If you want, you can lie and make something up. If you don't want to go scrambling for your notes. No, I found it. Um, okay, meanwhile, what are the rest of you guys doing? Yeah. Sword, shield, just... Yeah, I've got an arrow out and ready to shoot either of them at this yeah. point. Mostly the okay. purple lady, but like, I, I'm not rolling anything out. She's, um, while you're kind of struggling for words, she's gonna I, I have to ask, what's with the goody two shoes you brought with you? Well, I know what slaughtered them on sight, so why are they still standing? Because they're important. Not as important as you, my dear. 
You must know that by now. You've brought pain and destruction. I envy you. I wish I had such opportunities. Well, well who the fuck is this? Yeah, do you want to do uh, a bit of explaining? Just any time now. Um, well, oh no, no, go, go, go! No, I was just gonna say. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Can, while this conversation has been happening, can Nora be like casting a little detect magic? <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. Just a little. Yeah. Oh, what can we get? Okay. Uh, detect magic. Well, um, she is very magical. Um, she has the 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 large. Uh, stone that you see around her neck you actually uh given that she's close in being able to see it you see that it's actually a black shimmering stone that is in the shape of a heart a human heart beyond that uh there's several elements in here that are magical elements you see that there's a small kind of bag um, there are some pipes that are hanging, and there's also a large lantern that it was out that is outside the door frame, just sitting there. That's um, there. The um, yeah, that's most of it. Okay. With detect magic, I think you can sense like the school of magic, can't you? Oh gosh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no worries. Um, okay, so necromantic magic for um, the stone. Let me pull it up. Oh no. Um, this would be the pipe, would, the pipes would be necromantic as well. Yeah. And the lantern. Oh gosh. Um,. Oh no! Uh, if it's not a super I'm important, look if it's not super important, don't worry about it. It's really not important. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, Those are the two important things. The other one, I don't know. Okay. I'm gonna turn to these guys and be like, "I'm gonna be completely honest with y'all. I have never met this woman before in my life." So, but I'm charmed to meet you. She seems a fan of my work, I guess. Who are these work? two over here? Uh, the corpses? Mm hmm. Those two. Uh, those would be my parents. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Uh, Do you like them? I saved them just for you. Yeah, I, I thought they were still in the ground, you know, where I buried them. But, you know. I, I found them beginnings of decay. And I figured, why not help save their bodies a bit? And I pop it. And I can you repeat the last part? You cut out for a second. They're fun to play with. Oh, okay, thanks. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, You're sick. And don't don't push the. Don't. Um, you said you wanted to hear more about the hanging. Yeah. Is, that all they, is that all they told you? That I was hung? They said they tried to hang you. They did. They did try to hang me. And it didn't work. Hence, I'm still sitting here. I'm curious. Why didn't you kill her? You let her go. Of course I would. She's my caretaker. Why would I kill her? Ah. 
I suppose you're right. I just assume the killer of that degree wouldn't care about people what they do. I just care for blood. He does. I typically don't care to do things like that, but he does. So all those people in the in the square, Val. Mm-hmm. Oh, did you see my stage? I set it up. Very good. Found it in all sorts of era. People scared and running down and oh, that's not beautiful, is it? I sat on the stage, I put the, I gave an audience. How long have you been here waiting for me? First, I've been roaming this plane for a while. First, the summer came and they tried to kill me, but they didn't. And then the winter turned on me, but I was smart. I found an escape. And I found this safe haven of death and destruction. Who wouldn't want to live in a place like this? It's been lonely. Sometimes I send people for me to play with, new shadows to create. It's fun to watch as their goody two shoes manner slowly tends to fun. I get it. Just uh, the moral compass of these invaders come into my home. These must be your playthings. Uh, no, they're not. They're my new caretakers. And she stands up and with a flourish goes and collapses on the now uh, very rotted bed. And she goes, you're nothing like I expected you to be. No. Where's the artistry? Where's the pizzazz? I died when that noose came down and I, and I hung. I died that day. Well, never meet your heroes, I guess. Sorry to disappoint. What are you doing here? If not to visit me in my playhouse, why would you squander my hopes? Well, I needed to get through, and this is the only way to get to where I need to go. So we came through. Disappointing, I guess. If you're not here to play, try and make you a stay. That could be fun, don't you think? It could be, but I also, I like I said, I have a tight schedule to keep, you know, places to go, people to murder, you know. But I will be happy to come back and visit. And if you want, I can show you where I put her. 
Roll a persuasion check. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? <laughs> I wish I knew. Uh, persuasion, you said yes? Yeah. Oh, it's a hot 12, baby. Well. Okay. She's going to. With a flick of her ring, uh, of her ring finger, actually. You see two shadows appear from the two bodies and she goes no I don't think you will mm. let's have a roll, roll initiative please without caffeine we advantage with your caffeine advantage which is good fine, fine, fine. oh my god oh, shit. oh <laughs> my god what was <laughs> we get Willa <laughs> Um, thank God I have advantage because I rolled a nat one. Um, but that's going to be a hot 11. Okay, what's your dex? Um, 14. Here, wait, wait, let's do everyone first. Um, okay, do you okay, have okay, any okay. Uh, 20 to 15? 21. 21 as well. Oh. oh. Okay. Nice. Um, do we okay. have to do a roll off for that? or? Do you, you guys care who goes first? Isn't it high six? It is. Yeah. Yeah. I think that'll probably be Ren. Yeah. Yeah. I have. Okay. Twenty decks. Yeah. You. Yeah. You. (laughs) You win. Um. Fifteen to ten. Oh. Um. Thirteen. Thirteen. Eleven. Okay. And then Nora, what did you get? Nora. You are muted. Oh no! What? What did you get? Eleven. Oh, okay, eleven. Cool. Um, wow. Okay. Um. Just a quick question: Is this giant creature lady just a fangirl? I mean, what do you mean? Like, she's essentially a fan of Val's work, yeah. and is just, uh-huh. and is just. Cool, great. Mm-hmm. I said I. Oh yep. God, no! I don't like that. <laughs> oh, I forgot to roll for the shadows. One second. Uh, oh, okay. Um, okay, so Ren, you are up first. You see, as she flicks her finger, um, these two shadows, kind of like incorporeous forms, appear. Um, and then she says, no, I don't think so. Dude. Cool. Um, I'm going to cast Hunter's Mark on her. Okay. And then I'm going to shoot her with a Moonlight Arrow. Okay, go for it. Yeah. I've forgotten how to do any of this. Hang on. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, so first one's going to be Moonlight Arrow, but I have two attacks, I think. Hang on. Hello? Uh, and the second one's just going to be a Regular Arrow. Okay. So Moonlight Arrow is plus one, right? Pretty sure. It's plus one, and then it casts uh, Moonlight, which is something. Cool. Okay. Um, so Moonlight Arrow is 26 to hit. No, 27 to that'll hit. hit. That'll <laughs> hit. Uh, yes, that will. And then uh, Regular Arrow is natural 20. Oh. Okay. So, yeah, they definitely both hit. Uh, roll the first one. So first one, uh, fuck, math, seven damage, and then seven damage. Okay. Yeah, second one is doubled, right? Uh, yes. yes. Nat twenty. Is it double dice and then add modifier? Yes. Okay. Ooh, uh, sixteen damage. And then okay, have to eight. Okay. Hunter's mark. Oh, that's right. Two. What kind of damage is Hunter's Mark? Let me check. Is it just an addition? I'm not sure. Let me let me double check here. Hunter's Mark. Uh, uh, um, I think it's just an addition to piercing. 
extra 1d it just says damage yeah <laughs> okay. Okay. i would assume yeah. it's just cool. a oh yeah weapon type weapon damage type so piercing cool okay um sounds good okay and anything else um um and by the so, way Val, you're up next Got i it. think probably what would make sense would be to run somewhere within the small space far far mm-hmm. ways i can get and maybe try to be behind something if the okay item- i'll yeah. say it's difficult terrain due to how tiny and kind of scattered and gross this place is but um you're able to do you want to wait do you want to hide or do you want to get up on something uh, I just want to get some cover, but okay. I'm not. I'm not trying to stealth. I'm just trying to be. Shielded. Okay. Okay. So you run and try and kind of get behind a place. I'll give you half cover for that. Okay. Um, and she kind of <laughs> as you stick her in the back. Okay, Val, your turn. Uh, I'm and going and to. You're next. I'm gonna take out my scimitars. And I'm just going to just gonna go at her. Are you going to rage? Uh, no. No, okay. I'm not. Okay. Um, but I'm just going to go at her and I'm going to ignore the two corporal beings, I guess I should say. I'm going to ignore the ghosties. Okay. 21. 21? <laughs> that hits. Cool. And then... Six damage. Six? Six. I believe so, yes. Uh, yes, it's slashing damage. Yes, yes. So about three points of damage. Okay. Um, and any? are you using your bonus action to... Um, what I, could I use... Because I technically have two scimitars, so could it be two swipes or should it just be I think with that count? With the thing that we, I think with the thing that we worked out I think you get two attacks yeah yeah so yeah, yeah. So I'll do yeah the same thing again <laughs> 24 okay yeah that hits Let's go ahead and roll it okay. that's another six damage six Okay. Nice. Okay, Tim, it is now your turn. Cool. I'm going to also get in her grill and try and stab her. Um, okay. With my rapier. Go ahead and roll for attack. Oh. Um, that is a... Um, a na- no, sorry, that's a 22. <laughs> yes, um, that hits. Wow, ah, you guys are rolling well. Good job, guys. I know. I'm going to use um, Psychic Blades and get an extra... D6. A couple of D6. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to make her, have her brain hurt. I don't think I have. Oh, <laughs> Maybe. Man. I might have. Um, shit. All right. Okay. So it's seven. Sorry. It's 10 slashing damage. And then. Oh, um, nice. Uh, one second. Do sorry. Half, please. Okay. And then uh, 12 psychic damage. To just give her a big fuck off migraine. Twelve. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and that's ooh, and that's sweet psychic. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's well. I have a question. Yeah. So the moon moonlight arrow casts moonlight, which is similar to daylight. Are the shade things like magical darkness that's dispelled by? Oh. That? That's I don't know how it works. Good point. I completely forgot about them for a second. Um, it doesn't. Dis- Wait, what's the element of? Can you read the day spell or daylight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it sheds a sixty foot radius of light that spreads out from the point I assume of impact. Uh, but, but, but if any of the spell's area overlaps with an area of darkness created by a spell of third level or lower, the okay. spell created by the darkness is dispelled. The shadow things are not dispelled, but it does affect them. So thank you. Oh yeah, by the way, it is very, very bright all of a sudden. And kind of like the, ha- the yeah, the hag uh, goes, ah! kind of just away from the light. 
That's now protruding from her. Okay, anything else? That oh, so you're good? Yeah, I guess. Okay. Uh, Tam, it's now your turn. Oh, wait, no, it was already Tam's turn. Sorry. Yep. Okay. Yes. And you did that. Cool. Anything else, Tam? <laughs> no, I was like, so I just glitched okay. out. But yeah, no, I'm fine. Yeah, I was like, skip back. Okay. Then it is going to be the hag's turn. So she is going to um, look she, like kind of getting bombarded from all of these things and is going to look at Valby. I could never fight against you. And then is going to take her very long finger and says, yeah, um, is going to point at you, Tam, and I need you to make a, I believe it's a wisdom saving throw. Oh, um, not great, not great. Uh, that's a 11. Oh, no, 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 sorry. It's a ranged spell attack, so that's on me. Okay, all right. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, great. <laughs> uh, does a 17 hit? It absolutely does. Okay. Uh, so you are... So you get blasted with... You see this black energy that just uh, springs, like, kind of and hits you in square in the chest um so for um, you are going to make you're going to deal half damage with your uh strength weapon attack and oh. yeah oh that's okay because i use would that affect because i use dexterity to hit yeah uh, no it's yeah. only strength based attack oh so. valid okay okay um so Yep, that's going to be her turn, and she's going to kind of, yeah. Yeah, because she's not going to make a move. Okay, Augie, it's your turn. Cool. Um, Augie's going to do, uh, he, he's going to go to Nora and just kind of use the shield and, you know, step in front of her. Um, and let's see. He, he's, um... <laughs> He's gonna cast a uh, hold person what? second level because wait d does she count as humanoid? Uh yes yes okay cool so hold person second wait is it um, oh no I, I guess just first level um, hold person or uh, oh, just second yeah second level <laughs> hold person um, okay yes to make a wisdom saving throw ooh okay. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure she made it. Uh, 18 plus yes. two, so that's a yes. 22. <laughs> oh, and she, wait, sorry, wait one sec. She has, okay, and that's a natural 20. So, because she has advantage, and I forgot about that. So, um, yeah, she saves. Yeah, yeah, she makes it. That's amazing. Sorry, I'm just very excited, because I was like, I'll roll in case I get a 20. You're good. <laughs> Um, and also, if anyone, uh, b because I'm in front of Nora, I'm using protection as a reaction. So if anyone attacks her, they have to. It's at a disadvantage. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Nora, it's now your turn. Um, I'm going to try a whole person, too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, that is a six. That's going to be an 18. Nah, she gets it. Okay. What? She's, she's, magic's kind of her, her thing. Is that it? Are you doing anything else? No. Okay. Um, now it's the shadows. So you see as two of these... They go over, and you watch as they grow and grow, and they're going to rush. Let's see who's weak. Um, Nora and Ren. I, so they're going to rush both of you. Uh, 
Ooh, that first one's not going to hit, so Nora, you should be fine. Uh, Ren, that's an 11 plus 4. That's a 15? Does not hit. Okay. So you watch as these two kind of, like, shadows, they kind of, they flood you both and pass through you. No effect. And then they disperse into shadows. Cool. Not necessarily, not, sorry, disperse as in, like, you, they kind of melt into the shadows. Okay. okay. Yeah, they're not, they're not like, ah, disperse. <laughs> Oh, I have disadvantage. Anyways, let me just... Yeah, that's no, fine. Um, okay, so that is going to be their turn. Ren, it's your top of the turn. Oh! Okay, um, just double-checking. So last time I hit evil lady thing with a yes. uh, moonlight arrow, that one did full damage, but regular arrow did half. Is that right? I remember you yeah. saying half damage, but... Yes. Death rat? Okay. I have another Moonlight Arrow, so I'm going to do the same vibe. Same okay. Vibe. So two two attacks. One of them is going to be Moonlight Arrow. Let me see how many I actually have. I think I have three. I think you have three. Yeah, I have three. So this will be my second Moonlight Arrow. Thank God they're reusable. Okay. <laughs> Here I go. All right. First attack with Moonlight Arrow. Um, 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 20 total. That, that hit. And second attack, regular arrow. Hmm. Ha. Uh, 13. Misses. That okay. misses. But the so first one hits. That's what's just, important. Just the moonlight arrow. Okay. Yep. Which Val, is... you're, uh, you're next up. Tam, you're on deck. So it's 13 damage plus Hunter's Mark is all one. So 14 damage. 14! Hey, not bad! <laughs> Um, oh god, math, 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 math. Okay, I got it. Um, okay. Um, nice, and you moving? Or? Oh, um, um, no. Okay. Where I am. All right. Um, Val, it's your turn. I'm gonna take my scimitars and do the same thing again. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna do the double ones. Are you raging? So like one arm. Are you no, raging? I'm. I'm not raging. You're not raging at all. No. Okay. And um, so, do you want me to do like, cause I can do two separate rolls for it, or I rolled two dice. Is that cool for the yeah, one rolled, arm? Yeah. Yeah. What, what are the two? Uh, hold on. Eighteen for one. That hits. And then twenty-one for the other. That also hit. Go ahead and roll damage. You got it. So that was nine damage for one. Okay. Seven damage for the other. Eight. Okay. Ooh. Good job, guys. Good job. You did good. I'm so proud of you guys. You're doing great. Okay. Um, Tam, it's now your turn. Yeah, rinse and repeat. Same same thing. Okay, so go ahead. Uh, yeah. um, 17? 17 just hits. Okay, grand. All right. Um, so that's eight points of piercing damage. Okay. And... Uh, shit, what is math? It's 11 points of psychic damage. Okay, cool. That's four plus that's fifteen. Okay. Um and then I'm good. I'm done. Okay, that's it. Um it is now the hag's turn. Is that an action? Yes, it is. Um she's going to turn to Val and say I'm so disappointed. Oh, tough for now. And she's going to uh, cast etherealness. And you watch as the shadows in the room darken and darken and begin to wrap and envelop her. And then 
She's gone. Good thing you know I have cast Hunter's Mark on her. I know where she is. <laughs> uh, Actually, I have Hunter's advantage. Mark work? Does Hunter's Mark work across planes? Probably not, but I do have advantage if I'm trying to track her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Re- regressing, not taking count as well, but hey. Ah, uh, shit. <laughs> it's fine. Okay. Um. Oh, you know what? Because of my own homebrew. Yeah, she goes. <sighs> I forgot about that. Um. Okay. Yeah. So. She's is gone. Augie, cool. it's now your turn. Um, so you watch as the hag disappears. And by the way, Nora, you're on deck. So now it's just the shadows? Mm-hmm. Where, can, can I see them? Like, how far away? If I can see them, how far away are they? Well, because of... <laughs> The moonlight arrow. Um, they they have this advantage, or they wait, wait. I have a question about yeah. that. What's up? If the moonlight arrows were like lodged in her when she disappeared, have they just like dropped to the ground? If she's gone ethereal, like what? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna make you lose your arrows. So yes, cool. <laughs> I'm not gonna make you lose your arrows. So, uh, Augie, if you want, you can use your bonus action to see if you can see what they're, what they are. Yeah, I would like to do that. Okay. Um, I mean, so, so I can see them, essentially? Okay. Um, they're shadows. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'll I'll try using the long sword, I guess. Um, are you? What do you? What do you use? What are you? What are you? Like I like first. I use your bonus action. I need you to roll a perception check to see oh, if you yes. can even see gotcha, them. Gotcha, gotcha. Sorry, I don't know. If no, I you're good. Anything. Um, that's gonna be twelve. Twelve. They have disadvantage. Ooh, okay. Okay. Okay, that's six plus four. Okay, so you actually see both of them uh, appear to be huddled together in a corner uh, near the bed. Like, just like, literally cowering in a corner? They're huddled in a corner right now. Oh, just yeah. I'll I'll, I'll swing. <laughs> Fine. That's definitely not gonna hit. Um, I rolled a two, so um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, that's not gonna hit. Well, maybe. Wait, what's the plus? Is it like six? Yeah. Yeah. It'd be six. Okay. Yeah. No. Okay. Uh, is it, do you just have one? Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Uh, yeah. So does not hit. Okay, Nora, it's your turn. Can I attack the shadows? Yeah, you can try. Can I cast magic missile? Yes. What kind of uh, damage is that? <sighs> Fire. Okay. Cool. Force. Yeah. That's damage. Apparently. Force. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Yep, go ahead and roll. I'm gonna cast it at third level. <laughs> oh, okay. Hell <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus. 22? <sighs> to one or to both? Like... How did you spread that up? Uh, I'll split it between them. Okay. Eleven each. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Okay, okay. Um. Wow. Yeah. Um. 
You've never seen uh, shadows look hurt before, but it kind of, they, their form kind of shivers and shakes for a second, but then they regain uh, form and they're going to attack Nora and Let's do Nora and Tam again. Oh. Uh, and they have disadvantage. As a moonlight. Oh, uh, that's not going to hit. That's a four plus. That's an eight. And then. Ooh. Oh. That's like that. uh, uh, Tam. That's an 18 to hit. Yes, that hits. Okay. <laughs> That rolled surprisingly well. Um, so they're going to do... I, I kid you not, I got double sixes. Uh, that's 12 points of necrotic damage. Ew. And um, Tam, yeah. you feel yourself get a little weaker. And your strength goes down four points. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm not. I like, rolled a four. As in... So if it's a 12 now, it's now an 8. You now have an 8 strength, and you feel yourself <laughs> double over, and you're weaker. You feel weaker. Like I don't even know how to change that on D&D Beyond. <laughs> we'll get that, okay, sure, thanks. Just, just, just note that. So now you have oh any God. strength, you have a minus 1. Wow! That's so Instead good. of a plus 1. Yeah. Oh, Be minus oh, Alright. Okay. Um, and then they're gonna try and hide with disadvantage double 19 that's pretty cool uh and then the other one okay so one of them disappears back into the kitchen kind of around a corner um and kind of disperses into the shadow again uh one of them though goes back and is uh hut huddled over on the bed not learning from their past mistake okay ren it's your turn val is up so, Creepy Lady is still ethereal, or whatever? Mm-hmm. Eh. As far as you know. Blah. Blah. Um, <laughs> sorry, remind me, <laughs> remind me... Remind me of the positioning of these two shadow one of them, One of them, you can't see. Cool. Uh, um, one of them, you can. You can make... You can use your bonus action to try and see the one that you can't see, if you want. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, roll, roll perception check. Oh, yeah. I have to do something. <laughs> uh, 20 total. 20 total? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Then you see it because it... Wait, oh, wait, wait, wait. 19 plus... Okay. Never mind. You do not see it. My bad. Dang. Okay. It rolled a 19 plus 4. Yeah. For t- the other um, one rolled 7. Oh. Uh... How far is it if I wanted to quick go and grab my moonlight arrows? I'd say it's like 10 feet. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll run and do that, and then I'll shoot the one I can see with a moonlight arrow. The movement, okay. go pick up my arrows, and then okay. shoot. <laughs> cool. um, I will say... Uh, I'm only using you one know attack. What? Sure. It's Mother's Day, I'll let you do it. It technically <laughs> I would make it a bonus action to pick up the arrows, but you use your bonus action to perceive, but whatever. I could get rid of one of my attacks. I usually have two. Yeah, let's do that. All right, I'll, I'll shoot the shade thing with uh, one attack. <laughs> um, <laughs> 13? Oh, wait, it's plus one. 14? 14 hits. Go ahead and roll okay. damage. <laughs> six. <laughs> oh wait, it's plus six. Seven. <laughs> okay. Okay. So <laughs> you watch as the shadow you shoot at it, and oh wait, oh it's resistant. Oh wait. Oh. Oh wait. Oh. Okay. Okay. Is moonlight though? <laughs> yes. But were you? Oh, were you using your third one? Yeah, and I also just picked okay. up two. Okay. So, <laughs> so I That's just important. shot one. I, was like, I currently yeah. have two left in my quiver because I just picked them up as well. Okay. So um, 
yeah, you watch as you shoot and it almost, it, it's strange. It almost seems to, for a second, stick into something as it goes against the wall. And then the shadow dissipates. Did it do for any real, Not just into the, what? Oh, it killed it? Yeah. Oh! You did good! Yeah. All right. Um, Val, it's now your turn. So we don't know where the other shadow boy went. You can use your bonus action to make a perception check to see if you see it. I'm a yeah. I'm gonna do that. Okay. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's find the other one and kill it. <laughs> That's uh, nine. Uh, nine. Nine. You can't get anywhere. Cool. So. Hmm. Hmm. Hold on. I'm, I'm having a thunk here. Um, you're doing there, a thing. Tam, you're next. I'm doing a thing. Um, so technically, they're attached to the skeletons, right? They're so not skeletons. I'm... They're corpses. So wait, what? The corpses? They're not. They're not skeletons. They're full corpses. There's flesh. There is flesh. How? Gentle repose. Magic. I didn't think. Okay, that's cool. Um. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This just got ten times more personal. <laughs> I I thought that they were just skeleton skeletons. Oh, great. Oh, wow. That's fun. Um. Hmm. Can I just like, I don't know, go up to one of this? Skeleton, the corpses, sorry. And just move them, maybe? And maybe this, the, the shadow will come back. <laughs> like, I'm not talking like I'm punching the, the corpse. I'm talking about, like, just taking it and shifting okay. it slightly. Um, I'm make, not a about strength. Punching. Okay. <laughs> make a strength throw. Make a strength check. A strength check. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Twelve. Okay. You you use your strength and you manage to uh, move over one of the corpses and staring at you, eyes open, you uh -huh. see uh, the face of your mother. Still with a face of terror on her eyes, in her face. Um, yeah. So make a wisdom saving throw for me. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. Happy Mother's Day. Did you ever just look at the corpse of your dead mother? <laughs> Nat 20. <laughs> okay. Um, you look at this and um, you look at this and you realize it's just it's just a body. It's it's just a body. Okay, Tam, it's your turn. Um, I feel like I'm so, sorry for making you clarify. We can't. I can't see this. Like the remaining shadow. Yeah, can you I? can use a bonus. You can use your bonus action yeah. to try. <laughs> no, that's a three. Um, so, can I just hold my action to like stab it if I see it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you're holding your action. Augie, it's your turn. I will roll for perception. Um, that is going to be 11? Uh, no, you do not see it either. Okay. Um, then I'll do the same. I'll just hold my action. There's nothing to do. Okay. Nora, it's your turn. Can, <laughs> Can I cast whole person on Val? There we go. Okay. Um, Val, that's a... Uh, w is it wisdom? Yeah, but I'm going to give you my portent roll of 11 so you fail it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, <All> right. Yes. <laughs> okay. So now you're power um, that. So, cool. Val, you... I'm just staring at my mom. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> are looking down at your mom and you realize it's just a body and then you you feel yourself tense up and you can't move. Okay. Um, it's gonna it's the shadow's turn, so it's gonna use its strength drain again. Um I don't just go after Tam again. Oh, Jesus. oh my god. Uh, oh, no. that's 18 plus 4. Oh today. my god, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm oh, sorry. It makes Oh my god. Because it it's you're now the weakest party member, so it makes sense that it would Okay, okay. Only two points in necrotic damage. Cool. That's not bad. Um and one point of strength. So only now you're at seven. one. <laughs> yeah, so now you're at minus two. Now I'm at minus two. Okay. Yep. That's amazing. Like Tam's beefy arms just become like noodles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like um, like that seems good. And it's gonna try and hide get again. Strong, and then it all goes away. Yeah. <laughs> just you. <laughs> okay. So it rolled a uh, four. Pl- okay. So it tries to go hide again. Can Not very we, well, though. Because we've been holding our actions. Can we stab it? Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. So, yes. Okay. Before that, go ahead and try and hit it. Get my dad. Get him. <laughs> um, that's a... Uh, oh, no. Oh, God. Uh, that's his 18. Okay, that hits. And Augie, what uh, did you roll? A natural 20. Okay. Both of you guys will do. Um, I'm going to use Psychic Blades again, because what the fuck. Uh, that's a three piercing and s- 12 Psychic. Okay. Um, so, um, that's going to be 13 points of slashing. Okay. Uh, how do you both of you guys want to do this? <laughs> It's a shadow. It's okay. it's so you're actually back up at eight strength, Tam, because that it didn't get the time to. Amazing. Uh, do we, could we just like, like, can I get its head, <laughs> or just like its its sure. aerial head? <laughs> okay, and then are you ready? Um, I mean, it's about he's just gonna slash. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> So you watch, it's kind of like uh, from either side. It's like kind of, remember Fruit Ninja? <laughs> yes. yes. And, uh, you waft it through and it almost dissipates. And you just hear this. <laughs> as it <sighs> disappears. And you all take a second to look around at this disgusting hag's cabin. And look over at Nora concentrating, holding her hands as Val is just stuck in place. And that's where we're going to end this special Mother's Day session. Hey! <laughs> good job. So, yeah, good job. Uh, good job with creepy Uncovered hag, a little okay. bit more about Val. What? I said good job with creepy hag voice. Thank you. Thanks. I was working on it. Um, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Hag got away, but you learned some interesting things about your friend Val. And, uh, yeah, can't wait to see where this goes. Hopefully we'll learn some things, too. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I got yeah. Zone of Truth already, already oh, yeah. uh-huh. session, baby. <laughs> this will be All fun. Right. <laughs> so should we sign off as a stream? Well, yeah. yeah. So, um, remember to take care of yourselves. Yeah. Remember to, um, I don't know, just, just remember to be good and um, do good things and um, rest and all that and check out our uh social media stuff uh if you have any questions message us on discord or tumblr or instagram or twitter which i think we're gonna start using more um very exciting stuff so be sure to check all that happy mother's day 
Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Bye.